Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Neres, where medicine makes perfect sense. Another day, another biochemistry video. In previous videos, we talked about vitamins, the fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins, as well as the vitamin-like substance known as choline, which is important for your body. Then we started talking about minerals. We talked about zinc, we talked about copper, we talked about selenium, we talked about chromium, and today let's talk about iodine. By the way, what's the difference between iodide and iodine? It's the same as the difference between chlorine and chloride. The ide is the ion. By the same token, here is iodine, and here is iodide. Oh, but that's just a trivial distinction. It does not matter to me because I am a doctor. With such unction in his voice. Listen, doofus, your body does not have any chlorine in it. Chlorine is poisonous. But your body has a lot of chloride. Its concentration in your plasma is about 104 milli equivalents per liter. That's chloride, not chlorine. Of course, it makes a big difference. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order. Let's start with a case. Here's a patient who complained of neck swelling. Doctor, my neck was fine, but now my neck is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What do you call that? If the swelling is caused by the thyroid gland, it's called goiter. But hey, medicosis, does that necessarily mean that his thyroid is hyperfunctioning? Not necessarily. The thyroid could be hyperfunctioning, hypofunctioning, or normal functioning. So just because my neck is swollen, just because my thyroid is big in size, doesn't necessarily mean that it is robust in function. Iodine is a mineral. Is it macro or is it micro? It is micro. What are the macronutrients then? Carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. And what are the micronutrients? Vitamins and minerals. The minerals are macro and micro. Iodine is here. It's a micro mineral or a trace element because your body needs it in less than 100 milligrams per day. So in the five groups of nutrients, iodine belongs to group three, the micro elements, whose deficiency can lead to serious symptoms. But most of the time, the deficiency is not fatal. Unlike sodium abnormalities, potassium abnormalities, etc., Chemistry is so important, unfortunately, most doctors suck at it. So iodine is a mineral, i.e. inorganic, it's not a carbon, it is relatively small in size, and function-wise, it's important for your thyroid gland. Here's that lovely thyroid gland in your neck, it's a highly vascular gland, by the way, too many blood vessels here, that's why thyroid surgery carries the risk of bleeding. The thyroid gland has follicles, just like this follicle. This is one follicle. The follicle is lined by these follicular cells, aka thyrocytes. And since they are the main cells, we call them A cells. Between follicles, however, so between this follicle and the next follicle and the next follicle, in between, there are parafollicular cells parallel to the follicle parallel to the follicular cells, and they are clear, so we call them the C cells. So the A cells are the thyrocytes here, and they make the thyroid hormone. But the C cells are here, and they make what? Calcitonin. Let's go back to these thyrocytes or thyroid follicular cells. What do they make? Thyroid hormone. How do they make it? They need raw materials, such as what? Iodine and tyrosine, a mineral and an amino acid. And what's the end result? What's the product? Thyroid hormones, such as T4, T3, and reverse T3. And the parafollicular cells will make calcitonin. Using this raw material iodine, how do I get to make my thyroid hormone? Oxidation, organification, and coupling. And what's the heroic enzyme? Thyroperoxidase, which will not work if you have iodine deficiency. Here is iodide, lovely. It enters into your thyroid follicular cell or thyrocyte. Thank you so much, TSH, for stimulating this function. Iodide enters by secondary active transport in the same direction as sodium. So you call it sodium iodide co-transport, which is a secondary active transport. Secondary to whom? To the primary sodium potassium ATPase, which is found in every single stinking cell in your body. And then what should you do once iodide enters? You trap it inside. But it can escape back again. But hey, I am actively pumping it in. I will win. So iodine will increase inside the thyroid follicular cell. Oxidation from iodide 
to iodine, organification with thyroglobulin, coupling, mono and di equals tri, that's your T3 thyroid hormone, but di and di equals tetra, that's your T4 thyroid hormone. Let's back up for a second. Look at this. When you have one iodine and uh, thyroglobulin, you call this monoiodotyrosine because tyrosine is literally on the thyroglobulin. Tyrosine is the second raw material needed to make thyroid hormone. So this is monoiodotyrosine, just one iodine. And look at this, diiodotyrosine, it has two. When you combine one with two, how much do you get? Three iodine. So it's called triiodothyronine. How about combining di with di? You get four, tetraiodothyronine or tetraiodotyrosine. All of this happens not inside the follicular cell, but in the lumen of the follicle. Then T3 and T4 will leave the lumen of the follicle and will go back to the thyrocyte or the follicular cell. Protease, which breaks down protein, will break down all of those proteins, return all of that tyrosine and thyroglobulin, and give me that free T3 and T4 and dish them to the blood. How do I get to recycle my iodide back? By 5' prime D iodinase. It will clip that iodide away from these molecules, return it back and recycle it. If you have watched my previous videos, what is the name of the mineral that is required as a cofactor for the 5' prime D iodinase? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Okay, medicosis, if I have iodine deficiency, I don't understand why my thyroid gland is swelling. It's called deficiency, right? I think my thyroid should uh, shrink. Okay, let's talk about that. You are deficient in iodide, correct? Which means you cannot make T3 and T4 thyroid hormone. Okay, who's gonna get upset? The hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. As a negative feedback to your low thyroid hormone, your hypothalamus will make more TRH and your pituitary will make more TSH. Why? They are shouting louder. They are telling the thyroid, Hey, lazy gland, you should make more thyroid hormone. But the gland cannot because the raw material iodide is not available because you are deficient in iodine. So the hypothalamus keeps shouting louder. The anterior pituitary keeps shouting louder. And you know what this TSH does to the thyroid gland? It increases its size. Just like insulin is food for fat cells, and just like my testosterone is food for my testicles, TSH is also food for the thyroid gland. Too much TSH and the thyroid gland will swell. Too much ACTH and your adrenal gland will swell. That's why it's called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, even though it's not making cortisol. But since ACTH is high, thanks to the negative feedback, the adrenal cortex gets bigger. Hyperplasia. Same story here. I am deficient in iodine, I am deficient in T3 and T4, but because I have too much TSH from the negative feedback, my thyroid gland is getting bigger and my neck is swelling. It's called goiter. So iodine, it's essential nutrient, it's a micronutrient, it's a micro mineral, it's an ion, which means it's water soluble. It's present in your thyroid gland. Dietary source, if you're living near sea or near ocean, you will have enough iodine. Seafood is rich in iodine. Milk has iodine too. And nowadays we have iodized salt, which decreased the number of cases with hypothyroidism and the number of cases of goiter big time. Nothing is perfect, everything has trade-offs, but the idea of putting iodine in the salt was brilliant. It is very cheap, yet it prevents diseases in many patients. Adequate intake, 150 microgram per day. Oh, that's it? Yeah. It's a micro mineral, it's a trace element. Function of iodine, so that your thyroid gland can make thyroid hormone. And that's why iodine deficiency equals hypothyroidism, hypothalamus shouts louder, pituitary shouts louder, high TSH goiter. Thyroid gland is swelling in my neck. That's the symptom of deficiency. However, toxicity of the radioactive iodide, to be specific, Radioactive iodine can do what? Can absolutely annihilate your thyroid gland. And this is called thyroid ablation. Why would anyone do this? If I have thyroid cancer and it is so bad, before the cancer kills me, I should kill the thyroid gland. And that's one way to kill it. There are no solutions in life. 
only trade-offs. Hi, Minicosis. I've heard that if there is a nuclear attack near my house, I should take potassium iodide supplements. Why is that? Because potassium iodide will actually, literally, block the receptors on your thyroid gland. Which means, when the nuclear activity happens, God forbid, the radioactive emissions will not bind your thyroid because all of your receptors are occupied. Is there a drawback to this? Of course, you occupied all of your thyroid gland receptors, which means your thyroid gland will remain silent for a while. It will not work. It will be a lazy gland. You will have hypothyroidism for a while. In the vast majority of cases, this will improve and resolve and your thyroid gland will regain its function. Iodine deficiency can lead to hypothyroidism. Symptoms include, well, when my thyroid gland is not making thyroid hormone, remember the thyroid hormone is the stone of the body. Metabolism, baby. No metabolism. Everything is slow. Bradycardia. Heart is slow. Gut is slow and I get constipation. There is myxedema, mineralogia, cold intolerance. It's, it's very cold. No, it's not. No, it's cold. I'm telling you it's cold. Maybe you have hypothyroidism. The hair becometh coarse. I am depressed. Dry yellow skin, hoarseness of voice, weight gain. Even my reflexes are decreased. Do you want to learn about mercury poisoning, arsenic poisoning, copper toxicity, cobalt poisoning, cadmium poisoning, etc.? Then download my toxicology course at Medicosis Perfect Snellis Com. To learn more about the thyroid hormone in pharmacology and how you treat hypothyroidism, how you treat hyperthyroidism, what type of insulin do you use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis, what are the different types of insulin, what's the difference between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, all of this is discussed in my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. If you do not want to download my courses and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.